God refines us as silver or gold is refined. He makes us his own image. We can see this in what happens during the presentation of our Lord in the temple. We can see that not all is pleasant about the process of being refined. And in Simeon's words to Our Lady, your heart too will be pierced. But at the end is a great good, the greatest of goods. The King of glory comes to dwell within us and he makes us his holy temples. He unites himself to us and in doing so, he unites us to one another. He makes us his light to those around us and to all the people we will meet today. The Lord gives us his peace when he comes to us. We hear this in what Simeon says, Lord, now let your servant go in peace. And we are consoled after our times of trials and periods of long waiting. Just as Simeon or Anna, uh, who both spent long periods of time in the temple area, fasting and praying, uh, and thus being refined or made ready for the Lord's promised coming, we too are made ready uh, by our moments of fasting and prayer. We too are called with a joyful expectation of our Lord's coming uh, to us each day. How well do we prepare to receive him? Do we honor him when he comes? Do we get tired of looking or distracted by other things or people? Do we follow the examples of Simeon and Anna? Jesus is speaking to us constantly in his words and deeds. He teaches us in the silence of our prayer before Mass. He teaches us in the word that is proclaimed to us. He teaches us in the actions of the priest as he celebrates at the altar. He teaches us in our act of humbly receiving him into our bodies, our minds, and our hearts. And finally, he teaches us through one another. This happens when we speak and act out of his love, which we have just received from him. We are constantly being refined in this way, uh, so that we too might more perfectly take on his image and become who he is, namely love. Here now is a poem uh, by William Blake entitled The Divine Image, which I feel illustrates uh, rather nicely uh, what we become when we receive our Lord and how we should act afterwards. To mercy, pity, peace, and love, all pray in their distress, and to these virtues of delight, return their thankfulness. For mercy, pity, peace, and love is God our Father dear, and mercy, pity, peace, and love is man, his child, and care. For mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Then every man of every clime that prays in his distress, prays to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. And all must love the human form in heathen, Turk, or Jew. Where mercy, love, and pity dwell, there God is dwelling too. This process of becoming love is not always easy, and it requires us to take the lower place, the lesser portion. It can be painful at times, and as a popular song says, love hurts. Uh, we need to dethrone ourselves so that we can then embrace and enthrone Christ. We need to let go of ourselves or hold nothing back to then become the something, or rather the someone, the new image, the new person we are called to be in Christ. We need to begin to see the other as more important and as sharing in the same body as we do, the body of Christ. We need to see that we are all in this together and although we may have different roles or parts to play, we see that Christ becomes our all in all and our head and that we are his ministers. Do we let him do the thinking and commanding in our lives? Are we still trying to do the leading and commanding by ourselves? 
We are different, yet equal in God's kingdom. And we are each one of us called to play our own important role to bring Christ to others and to one another today. And yet, it is important to remember that none of us is the head. None of us is the one who leads. None of us is the one who directs. We are all involved in the act of following, listening, learning, forgiving, understanding, receiving, and loving. We are always dependent on God, who then makes us independent and free in Christ. How well are we following our head? We all become, in different ways, God's love to the world. We all become parts of his body and have his blood running in us and through us. We all become his adopted sons and daughters. We all become what we receive, as another song says. And we all become refined daily when we, compa- when we cooperate more fully with God's given grace to us and working in us and through us. We all become one with God and one another. And when we are following Christ our head well, we live in harmony and peace with each other and with all who we meet today. To be refined or made ready is to become one with God and one with one another and to bring his peace and love to the world. Let us do what we are about to hear proclaimed at the end of Mass. Let us go and announce the gospel of the Lord, God's love dwelling in us. Amen.